Peace everyone, Unmaskart here and welcome back to my self-portrait live stream. Uh, today we are going to be finally finishing the background. We've only been spending uh, five days on it so far. So day six is is how long you should spend on your backgrounds just just for uh, just for reference. So uh, without further ado, I'm just gonna jump right into this and uh, wait for the questions to come. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. I never get enough questions, so uh, yeah. I'm just going, I'm, I'm on the glazing stage now, and I started, I started that uh, the last bit of yesterday's live stream. And so I'm just going to continue on, uh, keep layering, build up the, the color even more, and then I will finish off with a bit of solvent, just kind of smooth it out, get rid of any of the, the pencil grain that might show through. Hey there, Shiny, good to see you. And yeah, that's, that's that. I hope everyone had a fantastic weekend. We are back, uh, back to Monday already, and my wife is off to work. She almost had a whole week off. She only worked two days last week. It was fantastic. We we just uh, bummed around the house pretty much the entire time. Had a lot of fun. Very, very relaxing weekend for sure. And now she's back to work and I'm I'm back to my normal normal stream schedule, I guess. Uh and I'll I'll do the uh, the stream in the morning sometimes sometimes in the afternoon and then on the weekends I might do it in the evenings or something. Just uh, be sure you're subscribed with the notification bell so that uh, you get notified when the stream is happening before it happens. I don't I don't know exactly how YouTube does that with the the streaming aspect of it but uh, I will schedule out each stream for this month uh, right after I finish streaming within like the next 10-15 minutes or so and so you, you'll be able to see that stream and go over to it and then I also put it on Facebook so if you join the Unmask Family Facebook page, uh, you'll be notified on Facebook as well. And then you can also follow me on Twitter. I always tweet the stream out right before it starts. Uh, so you can stay up to date on the streams. What is my favorite color? Uh, that's, a, that's a fun question. Um, it, it's really hard to say. Um, if I if I had to just give you like a, just a straight answer, I'd have to say red. I, I'd have to say red, you know, like this color red here. Um, I don't. It, it, the funny thing is, when I was when I was younger, I always really liked green or blue. Like those were the colors that I I kind of liked a lot. And uh, and I despised red. Um, and then when I was a bit edgier in my teenage phase, um, I just liked black. I wore a lot of black. I still wear a lot of black, but um, yeah, black had kind of um, overthrown the color spectrum and became my favorite go-to color for just about anything. And then, I don't know, just something about red in the past, I don't know, uh, 10 years maybe, that I just kind of enjoyed looking at the most, I guess. I just like red things. What is my favorite meal? Do you mean like what is my favorite food or like what do I like breakfast more than lunch or dinner more than breakfast or something like that? Or I, I assume you're referring to uh, what what is my favorite food? And so I'll go ahead and answer that. Um, 
That's that's another good question. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. Uh, you know, I love tacos. I, I Just a nice, crunchy taco. I don't know if, if I can think of anything better. I also really like burritos, but like nothing nothing is more satisfying than a perfectly crunchy uh, taco shell with just a bunch of stuff in it minus meat and um, yeah I don't know it might have to be tacos might have to be tacos I've always been a huge taco fan I think yeah yeah I'm probably gonna have to go with tacos Hey, what's up, Cece? Yeah, I agree. There is there is a lot of reds in the Polychromos set. Uh, just a ton of really nice reds. Those are some fun questions. Keep them coming. I like I like those uh, I like those you know first date type of questions. Hopefully, you're not working too hard, Cece. Not not a lot has not a lot of time has passed since my last stream. Like I felt like I streamed last night, went to sleep, woke up, and now I'm streaming again. Uh, I didn't have any I didn't have any dreams that I recall. Um, so not 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 much uh, not many events have passed to really talk about. Um, so I guess I'll talk about what I had for breakfast since I am still uh, day six, day six going strong of the no sugar, no oil, no processed food. Um, what else was there? I think no sugar, no oil, no processed food. I mean, just 100% whole foods. Uh, I had a big bowl of oatmeal uh, and I'm, I'm feeling really full. I'll probably, be good, I'll probably be good for the rest of the day um, I'll probably grab like an apple or something later for a snack, but goodness gracious, I, I feel very, uh, content. Uh, Sayity, I think is what the, the term is. When you have that con contentness of, uh, yeah, sayity. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. I don't use the word very often in my daily life, so I kind of forget it. But uh, yeah, big bowl of oatmeal with uh, banana chopped up in it. Uh, I had sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds in it, and then uh, some blueberries. Did I? I think I had something else. Oh, and raisins, a bunch of raisins. You know, to be honest with you, um, I'm not I'm not a huge fan of oatmeal. I'm really not like fond of it that much. And I've I've always I'm always used to putting sugar in it, but obviously I'm not putting any sugar in it. So I'm trying to trying to find nice ways to sweeten it 
uh, with just uh, fruits and stuff. And I, I have liked raisins in my oatmeal before, and that's a nice source of sweetness. Um, banana is obviously uh, sweet as well. Blueberries, and so I, I was concerned when I was making it. I'm not gonna lie. When I was, when I was making the oatmeal, I was like, man, I really hope I can eat this. Like, I. Because there's there's times where, you know, I don't have enough sugar in my oatmeal and I'm like, ugh, this is just too bland. It just feels like eating cardboard. And so I was I had that that thought in my mind as I was making it. I was like, please enjoy this, please enjoy this, like the whole time. And when I finally got to eating it, I was like, Okay, this it's not as bad as I thought. Um, it wasn't like mind-blowingly delicious or anything, but it worked. It worked. Uh, the blueberries added a nice little uh, flavor spike, uh, and I only added like maybe 10 blueberries, so not a lot for the size of the bowl. And um, surprisingly, I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Uh, I weighed myself this morning, and I've lost uh, I've lost a kilogram from last week, so I'm down one kilogram from when I started this month. Uh, I feel really good. I feel like full of energy each day. Uh, when I when I went vegan ten years ago, um, it took three days, like. Day one was yeah, nothing changed really. Day two, nothing really changed, um, and then like the the morning of day four. So after three days of being vegan, uh, the the change was so significant. Like I I just felt so much better after those three days that I knew I would never go back from from being vegan. I, after, after the third day, I was like, I'm never going back to the diet that I had before. And I didn't really expect, I didn't really expect anything like that this time because, you know, I had been vegan for so long. I, I already try to eat. I have already tried eating like really healthy and consciously as, even as a vegan, uh, that sounds kind of funny, but it's very easy to get caught up in things that are still vegan friendly but not healthy because there's just a ton of stuff. I mean anything fried is unhealthy, period. There's no exception there. Oil is not good for you. Um, <clears throat> isolated oil, processed oil. Just to, just to be clear because plants have natural oils in them uh, which are healthy. But uh, yeah, so I, I wasn't really expecting like, oh, you know, by day three, I'm gonna be transformed uh, by not having sugar or processed food or flour or um, oil or anything like that. Um, and to be honest with you, I, I didn't really feel much change by day three, but by day five, so like yesterday, I was, I, I noticed, you know what, I sleep better. I just I just fall asleep, I peacefully asleep, I wake up and I feel better than I have been in the past, you know, years. Um, I, I have a very, very steady energy level, which is reminiscent to the, uh, what year was that? That would have been 2000, 2011. Uh, in 2011, I went 100% raw vegan, uh, which not only is exactly what I'm doing now, but even like to a higher degree, uh, because I don't cook any of the food, I just eat it raw. And um, for those for those six months, I had the I had the most ridiculous ener energy levels ever, and. Um, 
you know, I would eat like I would eat a banana and it felt like I, I drank like six cups of coffee. I, I just was like ready to go and I never crashed. I had to just like I would wake up solid energy level throughout the entire day and and then just repeat. Um, and I was I was playing like a ton of basketball at the time. So it was like I, I had no reason to have such high energy, but I did and it was fantastic. Um, and I kind of feel, I kind of feel like that. Like I just have a ton of really continuous energy. And the funny thing is, I'm not eating as much as I thought that I would be. I thought that I was going to get like hungrier uh, throughout the day. But to be honest with you, like I wake up, I have like a banana and an orange or something, and um, and then I'm good until like mid afternoon then I'll you know make some veggies or, or something just something small um, and then maybe I'll g grab an apple or something just a little snack a couple nuts or seeds um, and then dinner time comes around and and the f even when I'm like getting ready to, to cook uh, a full meal I don't really have like this uh, this driving sense of hunger where I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to eat right now. Whereas, you know, a lot of times I'd, you know, I'd wake up, I'd eat breakfast, whatever it was. And then, you know, mid afternoon, I'd be like, oh gosh, I need to eat something. I'm like feeling lethargic or whatnot. Uh, I haven't felt like that despite uh, not eating as much. Well, what feels like not eating as much, but um, maybe it's just the quality of the food that I'm eating or the lack of bad things. Um, you know, I might, I might just stay sugar free. I wonder, I wonder if sugar is, has been making me feel like that uh, in the, recently. But uh, yeah, I thought I'd have a little bit lower energy kind of cutting all of that stuff out at once. But the, the fact is, I feel like I have a ton of energy. Um, sorry, I, I kind of got caught up on that subject and went with it. So let me check out some of the questions. Can I talk about my beginner beginning journey as a YouTuber, how you feel things have progressed in the years? Yeah, that would be cool. I, I will talk about that. Let me just uh, check the chat again really quick. Um, okay, yeah. So... Uh, shiny, you, you need to lose like five kilos. Yeah, I, I need to as well. Um, I need to get out of the seventies. I need to get back to, uh, when I met my wife, I was uh, 60, I, I want to say 68. Uh, that was when I was in college and I, uh, I was going to the gym. I was working out three times, a, three times a week and um, well, I wasn't doing YouTube full time then, but uh, yeah, I, I, I felt like that was my ideal weight, uh, right around 68, and so I uh, I need to lose like four more four more kilos, and I, I think I'll be satisfied. the the benefit of The benefit of a vegan diet is that it's very easy to maintain a healthy weight. Um, and I'm still at a very healthy weight uh, at 73. But uh, I just, I want to get back to the weight that I was in college. Because I feel like it's it's more ideal, it's, it's healthier. Yeah, 60, 68 is, is quite light, but, um, you know, I have a small frame. I'm not a big guy. Uh, I'm not that tall. I'm only like 84 centimeters, 80, 80, 84? Yeah, 84 ish, I think. I haven't measured myself in a long time, so I don't, I don't quite remember, but I'm, yeah, I'm not, I'm not a big guy at all. Um, I mean, you can just tell by my hands. Uh, I've, I've, you know, thin hands, 
partially because I haven't been doing construction work my whole life, but uh, I have very, very delicate hands. But I, I look better, physically I look better at, uh, at 68. I look, a, I look a little out of shape at, at 73, 74. I think I got, I, I never quite hit 75. I never quite hit 75. Um, but uh, yeah, even, even at 73, I still feel a little bit heavier than I wanna be. Not that, uh, not to imply that weight you know, th those small amounts of weight, you know, two or three kilograms, uh, you know, they don't, they don't make you unhealthy versus healthy. It's just, uh, I guess, a, a, a preference, I suppose. Uh, so anyway, so getting back to the your question, CC, like what, well, let me go back to it. So beginning journey of, of my YouTube. Yeah, that's a, that's a good, good long story. So this would have been 2012, two, yeah, 2012-ish. Uh, I was in, I was in college uh, getting, working on my associate's degree and I started I started watching more YouTube videos because I was never really before that I never really accessed the internet um, since I was in the military you know I was out to sea and when I wasn't out to sea I was still working uh, on a ship and I didn't really use the internet that much uh, I barely used Facebook or anything like that and which is unfortunate because it would have been nice to have all my military photos, but now I have none. Um, but I started watching more YouTube videos and kind of got into the the art videos that were on YouTube. And at the time, it was just really popular to have time lapse videos of you know drawing, painting, and all of that stuff. Uh, I never really came across m many tutorial type stuff. It was mostly the time lapses. And I just, I could just watch time lapses all day, every day. They were just so fascinating to me. And it made me want to do it. It made me want to do it. So I, I just kind of committed to figuring out how to do it. And what ended up happening is that uh, I got an iPad. Actually, I still have the iPad. It's, uh, it's quite old and has a cracked screen now. <laughs> but uh, I got an iPad and I actually got this commission. I got this commission to paint this sign for a restaurant. And what I decided to do was to just record myself painting this sign. And even though there was nothing like special about it, like the sign is really bland and it's not, it's not very artistic in any way, uh, to be honest with you. And I made my first time-lapse video out of that recording and it was such a pain to do this on my iPad. And the funny thing is I did most of my, like my first video parts were all done on my iPad. My first videos on my, my YouTube channel. And you can still go back and find these early videos. Uh, I did them on my iPad. And I would say I probably did that for like six months or so just using my iPad. And it was such a pain because I have just a 16 gigabyte iPad and the iPad always recorded in 1080p. So fairly large video files. And so from the very beginning, my iPad has never had anything on it. 
it still barely has anything on it. Like it doesn't have any, it doesn't have any music. It doesn't have any videos. It doesn't have any pictures. It doesn't have anything, uh, but except for a few apps, um, and so I would just prop it up and I'd record and I would get, you know, 10, 12, 13 gigabytes worth of video. And that would all that it, it'd be able to take. And that was probably only like maybe an hour worth of recording. Um, and so what I'd have to do is I'd have to plug my iPad in, transfer the video file, and then uh, delete it off my iPad and then I could record again. And so I would, ha I would go to where I was painting this sign. I'd prop my iPad up, I'd record as, and do as much work as I possibly could. When my iPad would fill up, I'd get in my car, I'd drive home, I'd, I'd take the video files off, I'd delete it, I'd go back to the restaurant, start painting again, and I had to do that like four times, I think. Four or five times over the span of two days um, for me to get this sign done and record it. I mean, I could have gotten the sign done in, in a day if I wasn't recording it. But uh, but I recorded it, and it became my first time lapse video, and it just as soon as as soon as I saw it and I, I watched the video and I edited the way that I did and I, I used free software to edit it. Um, I used some of my friend's music that he had written uh, for the video. And oh gosh, I was just so proud of it. I thought it was so amazing. <laughs> it's it's not amazing. It's pretty garbage. But um, I was I was just so excited to have my first time lapse video. And so immediately I was just like, oh, I gotta draw something. I gotta I gotta paint something. I gotta do whatever. Uh, I just need to make more of these videos. And so I just. You know, I got a tripod and I started propping my my iPad up, you know, properly with a tripod and a little uh, a little adapter stand to attach it to the tripod and all of this stuff. And I just I was like thinking of how to to make the the videos um, better. From the very beginning, I was always trying to like one up the previous video. I was like, oh, I got to make it better. I got to make it better. So six months in. Um, I get this, uh, I get this larger commission to paint a diamond for this granite company. They wanted a diamond on their wall. I don't know why it's a granite company. Diamonds don't have anything to do with granite. But, um, so I was like, oh, you know, I can charge, I can charge 500 bucks for this, uh, this commission. And with that money, I'll buy a new camera. And that's when I bought my GoPro. And I still have that GoPro. In fact, I used that GoPro all the way up to this year. I used that, that GoPro Hero 3 Plus Black all the way up to this year. And, uh, and I finally upgraded to the Hero 7. Uh, but... Yeah, that then I when I when I upgraded the camera, I was like, now I need to now I need to figure out what software I I, I need, I need to use, and I got a copy of Final Cut Pro from a friend, and um, and I was like, I have no idea how to use this program, and so I just watched YouTube video after YouTube video, and I learned how to use the program, and I got better at editing, and. Um, even to this day, I still, I, I still like find ways to improve my editing. And then finally, uh, goodness, I, I just, I just tried to make as many videos as possible. That was like my thing. I, I just wanted to, to draw, make videos, record, do time lapses, and just keep going and keep going and keep going. And that's where I did the the weekly drawing or something uh it never ended up being weekly it sometimes it, i would upload two a week or, or or one a month um but uh i tried to keep my channel looking as professional as possible 
uh, it never worked in the beginning. It always looked really cheesy in the beginning. But yeah, it uh, slowly just it, it slowly grew into my main hobby. And I I did uh, larger projects. I did some paintings, and I just got better in general at making more entertaining videos. And as I learned how to use my camera better, I could take better video, which produced better time lapses, more unique type of time lapses. And, uh, and then finally, I got a DSLR camera. Uh, my first one was a Nikon D5300. And uh, it was a really great camera, but it sucked for video. Uh, because it doesn't have autofocus, not the way my Canon does now. And so it was a much better camera for photography, and I took a million pictures with it. And so I, I did shoot some video with it, quite a, quite a bit of video with it. A lot of my early good time lapses that has B-roll, I actually did that with my Nikon. Um, and then... I was looking for a better, like, video camera, a, a better DSLR that shoots better video, and that's when I came across the Canon 70D. I don't really, what, I was in, I was in university at this time, uh, and my, like, I would go to, I would go to school, I would do my homework, and then I would make YouTube videos. Like, that was my life. I never, to this day, um, you know, I, all the years I spent in college, like, um, well, all the, all the time that I spent at university, uh, the University of Washington, I never made, I never really made a friend from that university. Uh, but I, I made friends when I was doing my associate's degree. Um, <clears throat> and uh, mainly because I never went out anywhere. You know, it was just uh, do my schoolwork, make YouTube videos, which requires no <laughs> social interaction whatsoever. Um, and I just, uh, I just practiced recording, making videos, uh, I would watch like tutorials. I still watch tutorials on filming, like uh, give me good ideas for, you know, storytelling through the lens, uh, and uh, yeah, just uh, I just kept doing it. I just kept doing it, and every time I would do something, I always wanted to improve. As soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, I can, I can do this, I can change that. Um, I, I, I feel like at this point, I've finally come to a point where not only can I do the filming really well, I, I'm, I'm good behind the camera, um, but I can also do the editing really well. Um, and now I'm getting in a little bit better at the technical side, um, like color correction and audio levels and just uh, overall level mastering for the video. So it's, it's, it's been a really, really long journey. And it was, it was really important for, for my progression, for me to learn all of these different things. I sure hope the live stream is still going. <laughs> you guys have been awfully quiet in the chat. But, uh, yeah, it, it, was, it was really important that I learn all these things to progress with what it is that I do. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to do what I do because uh, there's no way I would have been able to afford somebody else to do all those things for me. It's 
been a really fun journey though. Very, very fun journey. I, I've spent a, a considerable amount on the gear that I use to make my videos. And when I, when I come to realize, like, I probably could have saved a lot of money if I knew exactly what it is that I would, that I need for what I want to do. Yeah, I, I probably could have saved quite a bit. But uh, that's, that's the expensive side of, of doing it all on your own and just you know, teaching yourself everything. You kind of, you grow and you learn and, you know. Because I have, uh, yeah, I have like this $300 microphone that I never use. Um, it's a shotgun microphone uh, and I replaced it forever ago with a uh, like a $15 lapel mic and a, a $10 extension cord. <laughs> the uh, the audio quality the audio quality with the lapel mic is so much cleaner than the shotgun microphone. Simply, I mean because there's no soundproofing here. Uh, even even the audio that you guys get for the live stream is not not uh, as good as I'd like it to be partially because of the room I'm in it's all concrete so the sound reverberates and bounces so insanely much in fact it reverberates so much that my own ears pick up the reverberation when I'm talking and it it drives me absolutely crazy it it makes you feel like uh, it makes you feel very claustrophobic because when you say something, it's like it's being, it's like you're whispering in your own ear. It's very weird uh, to, to talk with all of the concrete around you. Uh, I would say the one benefit though, the one benefit is that I can talk to my wife in the kitchen at the same volume, if, as long as my door is open here. But my, my wife could be in the kitchen or in the bathroom, whatever. As long as the doors are not closed, I could I could talk at this volume, and she can hear me, as though she's in this room with me, uh, and she can talk at the same volume, and I can hear her as as though she's in this room. And it's because as soon as you say something, the sound is just flinging all over the place, bouncing off the walls like crazy, and so it will find itself out there in the kitchen. Um, and so maybe that's like one benefit of full concrete walls is that you can you can whisper to your significant other all the way in the other room uh, and hear each other perfectly <laughs> because it's like no matter where you're at, it feels like they're whispering in your ear. Um, I'll be streaming until I finish the background. I don't really know how long that's going to be. I suppose it's it depends on uh, uh, how quickly I can work and talk, because I was not I was explaining all of that for I don't know how long and not coloring at all. Yeah, it's tough to say how long it will be, because um, I just I want to get the background exactly the way that I want it, and uh, then I need to just smooth it out with solvent and wait for it to dry and. Yeah, I, I could be done in 10 minutes. I could be done in two hours. I honestly can't say for sure. All I know is that I am finishing this background today.
uh, someone should make and market padded wallpaper. Uh, I think they have something like that. You know, there's a lot of soundproofing, soundproofing methods and stuff. Wallpaper wouldn't stick to the concrete, though. It would just peel off after a year or something. The, that's the one, like, common issue with these concrete walls. The, the paint... The paint doesn't even stick. I don't know. I don't know if the person that painted these walls did it improperly or not. But uh, whatever they did, it doesn't work because I I put a lot of stuff on my walls, as you can see behind me. Uh, and when I take it off, it it will peel the tape. It will peel the paint off. Let me see here. Yeah. So you can see this piece of tape. See those little white specks. This is this is. Uh, low tack painters tape. I use this on my my drawings and everything all the time uh, And even this tape Will peel off those little bits of paint those that's the paint off the wall just cleanly off the wall um, And that paint there that tape is specifically designed to do just the opposite of that um, and the this part of the wall over here uh, where I tape things and then untape them all the time. Uh, it, it has a bunch of little patches where uh, the paint has been pulled off by tape, just like that. And um, so I don't know if they did it incorrectly or it's just the it's just the way the the paint sticks or lacks to to stick to the uh, to the concrete. Um, I had one of my pastel paintings hung up. Uh, I put it in a, uh, I don't even know what the, what you call those things. Uh, a mat board. Like I, I made a mat frame for it and I had it taped like crazy. I had tons of tape on the back to tape it onto the wall and it fell down one night. Um, because it peeled the paint off and I had it I, I was like I do not want this to fall ever and I, that's how much tape I had on it and it still managed to unstick itself so I don't think uh, I don't think anything really wants to stick to these walls Yeah, I, I can, uh, I, I can uh, kind of agree, shiny, like, you know, living with more wood. Because, you know, sometimes these concrete walls feel more like a prison than a home. I'm not sure what that little spot there is, but I'm going to try to remove that little spot there. I don't know what the heck it is. It's about as good as it's going to get. <clears throat> Hey there, Christy. What is my art background? That's that's a really good question. Um, I don't I don't really have an art background. Uh, I went I graduated from college with a degree in mathematics. Um, when I was doing my associate's degree, you know, just getting my prereqs for my bachelor's. Um, I took one painting class. I took an oil painting class and that class just changed my life. Um, 
that's when I feel like I really, really got into learning art a bit more seriously. But I, from that point, I, I didn't take any other classes. I just continued to, to create. That was in 2000 and that was in 2012. Uh, before that, you know, I, I spent the last 20 years, 20, nah, 24, about 24 years drawing, uh, just as, you know, a personal hobby. No, no direction or anything like that. Just, uh, just doodled about. I started out drawing things that I liked, like cars and skateboards and just, you know, animals, what kids draw. Uh, I didn't get into drawing people until I was in high school, a, uh, a freshman, freshman in high school. So I would have been like 14 at the time, and 13, 14. And uh, I did a little bit of painting when I was in high school, uh, maybe, maybe a handful, maybe 10 paintings when I was in high school. Uh, and then after I graduated high school, I went into the military, probably took about two years for me to get back into art while I was in the military. Uh, not exactly the most conducive environment for creativity, considering the entire uh, military experience is meant to turn you into, you know, the gingerbread man, and everybody's meant to be the same gingerbread man, just to kind of go through boot camp with a, a cookie cutter. You know, they mush you up with the... 80 other people and they just roll you out and stamp everybody again with a cookie cutter. So not the most creative environment. And so it took about two years for me to kind of like regain my bearings and be creative again. I did a little bit of painting. Um, and then when I got out of the military in 2011, I went straight to college and um, it was, you know, uh, about half a year later when I took the painting class. Uh, and that's the extent of my background in art. Uh, no real traditional education at all. Uh, the painting class was just an introductor, inter, introductory class to oil paints. Yeah, so there was no, there was no, uh, real technical side to the class. Uh, you learn some basic techniques like you learn about glazing, uh, you learn about uh, dry brushing, you learn about uh, a la prima painting, you know, all at once, like the wet and wet on wet method. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's about it. But it was a very inspired class. Uh, my instructor, Sandy, was absolutely the greatest art teacher I'd ever met in my entire life. She quickly became like my mentor and just somebody that uh, I talked to all the time. And uh, yeah, I learned a lot. I learned a lot about art in general from her. And she really, she really motivated me to just keep creating. And, um, and that's exactly what I did. And then, you know, a few years ago, I was just, I graduated from college and I had this uh, lovely girlfriend that lived in Poland. So I came to visit and, um, fell in love. And then I, uh, wanted to, I wanted. I was going to go back to school to get my my master's degree uh, in education, but I didn't get accepted into the program the first year, and so I was like, you know, I'll just take a year off and uh, go live in Poland with my now wife, but then girlfriend. And so during that during that time, I was like, you know what? I'll just uh, I'll just do YouTube full time. 
you know, see if I can make anything out of it. It took a year, and after after my first year of doing YouTube, uh, I was like, you know what? I'll just uh, I'll just keep doing YouTube, and I'll just do this as my career. Uh, how do you draw human figures in proportion? Uh, practice. There's when it when it comes to drawing. When it comes to drawing, there is no escape from doing it, failing, doing it again, failing, doing it again, and just repeat, rinse and repeat. Like uh, drawing. Like that's one subject that I don't. I don't teach on my channel and the reason I don't teach it is because there's a lot of gimmicky there's a there's a ton of gimmicky nonsense on YouTube about learning to draw um, and I would say 99% of it is just worthless it's a waste of your time to, to watch it's a waste of your time to listen to um, and the the reason I don't teach drawing on my channel, um, I have taught, I have done some drawing tutorials in the past, very few, like only a handful out of the like 600 videos uh, that I have. And the, the, really, the reality is, is that there is no easy way, there is no secret technique or method for you to learn to draw. That's, that's the, the uh, harsh truth of the matter. Um, and you just have to keep doing it and failing miserably. Um, and you eventually, you eventually stop failing miserably and you just begin to fail. And then eventually in the midst of your failure, you create your own style you create your own artistic voice, um, and you develop you develop techniques and skills that only you can teach yourself. And uh, that's how that's how you learn to draw. That's how you get better at drawing. That's the the real secret. Experience is the only the only way to do it. Experience, I, I, I will regularly say that, uh, you know, when a student compliments my, my teaching, I always say, I'm, I'll never be as good as experience. I will never be as good as a teacher as experience is. Now, there's, now with, with all that said, there are certain concepts, there are certain constructs that you can that you can use to help train your mind to see objects in a certain way um, there's no right or wrong way to see objects everybody's going to learn a little bit differently and what i mean by that is you know if you're working on a person you know, being able to break up their anatomy into very digestible shapes. You know, the head is a circle on top of a cylinder, and then the shoulders are, you know, planted as circles with anchor points. The, 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 the chest and abdomen area is a, a bean. Um, the, uh, the, the pelvis and hip bones are, I, I don't know, um, uh, two two plates, two plates. I, I, I don't know. There's a, there's a whole bunch of stuff, a whole bunch of stuff, and uh, you know, it, I would I would say uh, if you if you're struggling with proportions. 
just do quick sketches, you know, do really quick studies. Uh, there's, there's YouTube videos, there's some YouTube videos that are really great. They'll just have like a, um, like a live model posing for like five minutes or one minute or something like that. And you're just, it's designed to do like a quick sketch uh, of the, get the pose, try to work on the form and the proportions uh, and only spend a minute on it and then go to the next pose, go to the next pose. And, you know, you can, you can do that. You can start, you can draw your, your people real small, you know, maybe about 10, 11 centimeters tall. And that way you can fit several of them on a single page. Uh, and you just uh, repeat it over and over again until things start to click. I'd say that's probably the best advice I can give on, on uh, getting better at drawing. But uh, yeah, there, there's, there's never going to be something that you hear or watch that's going to teach you better than experience. I mean, goodness, I, uh, if I had my old sketchbooks here, I would show you just how bad my people were. When I first draw, when I first started drawing people, I found as many ways as possible to hide their face because I couldn't draw, I couldn't draw faces. And of course, um, I was just like every other high school boy. All I wanted to do was draw attractive women. It's really hard to draw attractive women when all the faces look like, uh, they, I don't know what they look like. They look like, um, abused cartoon characters. <laughs> I, I always was, I always was, uh, fascinated by how an artist could create an attractive person as a cartoon character. Like, like simple lines, the way that they drew the mouth, even the way they drew the nose. I mean, personally, I find the nose to be the least attractive part on a human being. Um, and uh, somehow, Artists have found a way to draw a nose with just a few simple lines to make even the nose an attractive feature uh, in a drawing. There is like nothing attractive about a nose. I would say that the, the features of the face that I am drawn to is the lips and the eyes. The nose has never been among those. But, um, yeah, you know, you just, uh, you just grow and you learn. And that's, uh, all based on experience. That's, that is why I don't, uh, do drawing tutorials on my, on my channel. Having, um, now with that said, having a good mentor, having somebody that can look at your work and give you feedback, uh, that knows what they're doing is also even actually, even if they don't know what they're doing, you know, if you're, if you're working on something uh, you can, you know, hand it off to somebody, ask for their honest opinion, have them tell you what they see looks off because sometimes we get blinded by our own success uh, and we can create a, a false sense of precision when we're you know 
spending time staring on into a, a piece of paper, uh, we can kind of get, we can kind of trick ourselves into thinking something looks right when it's not. And so getting, getting an opinion from somebody uh, can be really eye-opening as well. And sometimes that's a, a really beneficial method to just improving. Because say you're, you know, drawing a figure or whatnot, and you're like, oh yeah, this is like the best work I've ever done. You know, you can hand it off to somebody and be like, hey, you know, does anything look off here? Just, you know, give me your honest opinion. I'm not looking for a, oh wow, that looks really good type of thing. I'm looking for you to crit critique it and tell me that, you know, all oh, this arm looks weird. Even if they can't, even if they can't articulate what is weird or off about the drawing, they'll be able to um, tell you that something looks weird. They might not be able to articulate it like an art teacher would be able to, a good art teacher anyway. Um, but if they can like look at the leg and be like, I don't know, this leg looks a little weird. Um, and then once you once you get the impression from them that, oh no, the leg is weird, uh, then you'll look at that leg differently than before you handed them the, the, the drawing. Uh, I, I really, actually, uh, I, I can't believe it took me this long to come to this realization, but um, in the video description uh, on all of my videos, uh, there's a link to the Unmask Art Facebook page, the, the family, the Unmask Family Facebook page. And that is exactly the, the place where you would, you know, post your drawing and be like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to improve. You'd say something like that you're trying to improve your figure drawing skills and you're, you have this picture and you're not really sure what needs corrected or if there's something off, you can get the input of several really great artists and family members, uh, myself included, if I see it. But uh, yeah, you're always you're more than welcome to post it there and get feedback and ask questions about how to improve. You know, like I, I say that experience is the greatest teacher because that's the truth, but you know, sometimes, sometimes there's lessons that you can kind of uh, fast forward through a little bit, you know, if you get the insight from somebody else. Yeah, it is, it is sometimes difficult to get like an honest critique because people want to be kind. But if, you know, if you post in the, the Facebook group and you say, look, I'm looking for honest review, don't be kind, don't feel like you're being mean, I'm looking for my artwork to be torn apart and people dissect every line and tell me what's wrong, what looks weird. You know, if you post it that way, I'm sure you're, you'll get much realer answers. Because, you know, some a lot of people will post, like, uh, critiques welcome or whatnot, but um, sometimes that's just, a, you know, to sidestep the rules a bit. Really, they're just looking for the praise. You ask for honest reviews, you'll probably you'll probably get one or two of them. You know what? Uh, once this dries, I think my background might officially be complete. I feel like I could probably smooth this area out a little bit more though. But I'm pretty pretty satisfied with my background, I think it's looking exactly the way that I want it.
Oh, uh, thank you, Serial. I appreciate that. I, I appreciate your question, too. It's a, it's a really, really good question. And I hope that I gave you a bit of insight to help you progress. Hopefully I didn't discourage you too much. Um, I have, if you're interested, I've, I've done a couple live stream demonstrations of drawing and I break down uh, the techniques that I use uh, to the most basic form that I that I could. Um, the, the, the live stream is a drawing journal, uh, how to draw faces, I, no, how to draw how to draw heads from every angle. Uh, and then there was another one that I did, how to draw hands. I, th I think it was how to draw hands. Uh, but if you if you look up drawing journal, how to draw hands, or drawing journal, how to draw heads, um, those those videos should pop up. You know, they're an hour or two long. Um, it was a live stream, so I'm answering questions in real time, and. Uh, now, I'm working digitally in both of those examples, but I'm breaking down the drawing process and how my mind works when I'm drawing from a reference photo in particular. But um, yeah, I break those things down um, to the best of my ability at the time, and uh, you, might, you might find them helpful. So that's why I'm bringing them up. They might present some key techniques that you that you may have not come across before. How long have I been streaming? Oh, just an hour. You know, I thought I thought for sure I was going to be streaming like two, three hours today, but let me just hold this up over here. Yeah, I am. I'm very satisfied with my with my background. I don't think. You know, I, maybe I do want a little bit of white. I am considering adding some white. Hmm. Let me see. Let me ch let me check my colors real quick. I kind of want to create a little bit of a foggy look over top of it, and I might just like tone it down, tone the color down a little bit. And so I'm thinking about maybe grabbing a white, possibly just a light gray. Yeah, I think I might do that. I'm going to do, uh, which color should I do? Let's see, 230. Yeah, I'm going to do polychromos. So let me grab my polychromos pencils here. So I'll do a little bit more layering. Oh, thank you, Craig. I appreciate that. I'm glad that uh, glad that you've enjoyed the bit of the stream that you've been able to catch. Uh, I will be doing this stream every day for the entire month of May. And the, ch the times will change, so it won't always be 4 o'clock in, in the morning for you. Polychromos, I really wish that they would fix their numbers on their pencils. They're so impossible to read because they are so reflective in the font. The font that they chose for their pencils is just hideous. All right, I'm gonna give this pencil a quick sharpen, so just give me a moment. All right, 
Now it's nice and sharp. The power of electricity even makes pencil sharpening a thing of the past. Uh, what am I using to blend? I'm glad you asked because I haven't yet got that question today. And uh, I'm using Zestit Pencil Blend Solvent. I've been asked every day, <laughs> I've been asked every single day of streaming so far what I use to blend the pencil. <laughs> So I'm not I'm not sure if you are asking ironically or not, but it's kind of a it's kind of an ongoing joke to ask what I'm using. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm not using watercolor pencils. I'm using normal pencils. Yeah, uh, I'm using uh, Polychromos uh, by Faber Castell. I am using. Luminance by Karen Dash, and I am using Prismacolor Premier by Prismacolor. <laughs> yeah, so I'm using those three sets of pencils. Um, I've used, uh, for the background, for the background I've used this many colors, and I just added this gray. For the past six days I've just been, uh, I've just been layering well actually no the past five days because day one was just uh just the line art So I'm just going to uh, kind of gray out like around me, almost almost like a, a light, I guess. But I just want to pull out a little bit of the color. And then I'll probably smooth it out one more time with uh, my Zestit solvent. And the background will be will be complete. To be honest with you, this gray is barely doing anything. Okay, there it is. I see it. It is It is a little bit lighter. It's a little bit lighter, a little less color. It's doing exactly what I want it to do. Hopefully I haven't missed anyone's, uh, hopefully I haven't missed anyone's questions. If you asked a question and I missed it, uh, feel free to ask it again. I'm happy to, happy to answer it if I missed it. Uh, the Zestit solvent is what I usually use, yes. Uh, I've been using it for, I don't even know how long, quite some time now. Uh, I have used many, many, many different solvents to blend my colored pencils. And what I can say is that it doesn't make a difference what you use. Uh, though, with that said, they, they all work the same. You're, you're gonna get the same quality of blend and all of that with all of them. But if you use the Zest It, it's better for the environment than the other types of solvents that you get. So I recommend seeking out the Zestit for blending your colored pencils because it works just as well as anything else. 
and it's better for the environment than the, the other types of uh, terpenoid mineral spirits that exist out there. Is there another way that would still make it look realistic without chemicals? Uh, well, actually, you don't have to use a solvent to blend your colored pencils. You can just layer until it's burnished. Uh, I did that for a long time. You know, I didn't even come across the solvent method for, you know, some time of working with colored pencils. Um, and so you don't you don't have to use them. You can just keep layering until you get uh, the final burnished stage. Uh, but I will say that the the solvent is a really big time saver. I mean, the zest it, it doesn't it doesn't smell like it has a little bit of a scent to it if you like you know put your nose up to the bottle. But other than that, you know it's it's environmentally friendly and. You know, it, it doesn't really have a smell. Some people are a bit more sensitive than others when it comes to scents. Uh, I am not one of those people, so I might be a little biased in that regard uh, when it comes to the scent. Uh, but I have it... Like, I, I have it on this little piece of tissue here from yesterday and today. And... It smells, it smells a little bit like a, uh, like a garage, you know, like you would, if you went to a mechanic, uh, maybe if you went to like, uh, get your oil changed or your tires rotated or something like that, it kind of has that scent of, you know, uh, of a garage that has like oil on the cement or something like that. So it, that's that's like the, the the smell that you would get. It's not really strong. Um, I'm you know, I get headaches really easy from from certain smells, colognes, perfumes, that kind of stuff. Um, but the Zestit has never given me a headache or bothered me enough. And you know what you could do. You know you get it. You get it in a relatively. You know this is a 250 milliliter bottle. You I think you can get it in larger bottles. If you get it in a larger bottle, what you can do is you can put it in smaller containers so that when you actually need to use it to blend, you only have to open a really small container so there's only a tiny a tiny amount in there. And uh, the, the scent shouldn't bother you too much. I mean, it's not really expensive to get a small bottle of the Zestit. So at the very least, you could buy it, try it out if you don't like it you don't have to feel obligated to use it. Uh, thank you, Serial. I'll see you on the next stream. Take care. Trying to to see the smoothness of my of my paper it's very very 
It is super, super smooth. I kind of just like to look at it. I'm just about done here. I actually don't think I need to, I, I don't, I don't need to uh, blend this out with solvent. I might actually try my colorless blender though. I might try to smooth out some of this stuff down here with my colorless blender and see how that works. Because I really like the, uh, I really like the, the, the smoothness that I'm getting by finishing with this pencil. The, the Luminance Colorless Blender is also a really, uh, really great way to avoid using a solvent. That is so smooth. I love it. All right, I'm gonna give the uh, Luminance Colorless Blender a, a, a shot. I'm gonna see if I can't maybe get rid of a little bit more of that pencil grain and just give it a nice final, final smooth. I haven't actually used the colorless blender in quite some time. Uh, I, I find that if you're doing like a a final blend slash smooth burnishing, it's better to use an overhanded grip with a very horizontal pencil, especially with the colorless blender because the tips are really easily broken. So if you use a little bit more of the flatter edge, you can get you can get a, a bit more pressure without snapping it in half because these are really easy. These are really easy to just break in half. They it's like um, working with a really weak piece of plastic. Oh yeah, I think that looks that looks good. Take care, Christy. Good morning, Tony. Saying saying good night to a few of you, saying good good morning to the rest. I'm just about finished for the day. I'm just going to do a quick uh smooth over with this colorless blender and that will be it. The background will officially be complete and tomorrow I'll just uh, start with the eyes. Start with the hard part. Tomorrow I'm actually doing two live streams. I'm doing this live stream and then I'll be doing the pastel, soft pastel tutorial over on Patreon. So tomorrow will be a, a busy day for me. this side. I'll just kind of start up here at the top. It's not a whole lot to smooth out on this side. I did a lot of smoothing with my other colors. It 
you know, believe it or not, even after, you know, this is uh, literally as smooth as, this is, it's smoother than the paper, and this paper is already smooth. Um, you can still add color to this, to this layer, uh, but only, only like a glazing, toning color. You can't really drastically change the color at this point, but you can still make fine adjustments. And depending on how much I still like the background, once I start the portrait itself, um, I may uh, I may make some fine-tuning adjustments to the background during the polishing stage. I'm I'm going to try to leave at least the last three days of the month for the polishing stage because I imagine it's gonna it's gonna need a uh, quite a bit of polishing near the end just to make sure that it's as good as I can get it all right Sarah you take care oh hello Jose um, I am originally from the United States, but I currently live in Poland. So thank you for thank you for tuning in from Mexico. Appreciate you coming by. Although uh, this is going to be my last last few seconds of the live stream so with that tiny piece uh, smoothed out now I am officially calling the background complete and tomorrow I'll start on my face so there you there you have the background there it is um, yeah, so tomorrow I'll start on the eyes and get started on all the, the tricky stuff, all the, all the difficult stuff. So thank you guys so much for coming by and hanging out with me while I finish off the background. Um, I look forward to uh, getting started tomorrow, so make sure you're subscribed, make sure you have the bell icon turned on so you get notified of the stream. Uh, I think what I'll do, I will start tomorrow's stream... I think at 11 my time, so one hour later than what it was today. Um, and maybe get uh, at least an hour, maybe two hours in. And then uh, on Patreon, I'll be streaming at 1500 my time, which is the usual time. I'll have both of those streams scheduled. Uh, if you want to check out the uh, my Patreon, I have a link for that in the description. Uh, to get access to the, all of the Patreon streams, I do those uh, every Tuesdays and Thursdays. There's a soft pastel one and there's a colored pencil one. Uh, it's just $5 a month. Uh, you also get access to like the huge, gigantic library. Uh, hundreds of hours worth of tutorials um, for the same price. And so, yeah, that's going to be it. Thank you guys so much. Enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you next time. Take care. Peace.